What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and this is the start of a four part mini series about how to start using SaaS today in your web development projects. SAS is the most widely adopted and trusted CSS extension language or CSS preprocessor out there right now. It allows you to write CSS the way that it should be written, dry and easy and efficient and sexy. Okay, I took it a little too far, but it's really, really good. In this first video, we're gonna be focusing on installing SAS onto your machine, getting it up and running in your project, and using a little subtle nesting to make your life a little bit easier. Let's dive in and get that going. Well, to learn more about SAS, you can go to saslang.com and I'll tell you all about it. It truly is CSS with superpowers, but we are really concerned about installing, and so I'm gonna head right up here to install. You can install SAS on Windows, on Linux, on a Mac. You can do it on everything. I'm using an Apple computer, so, um, um, that being said, I'm gonna be using Node or NPM to go ahead and install. Uh, if you don't have NPM installed, you're gonna wanna install that, it's really easy. You just jump over to npmjs.com and click on Get NPM. And it's gonna allow you to download Node.js and NPM in one kind of package. There's no crazy setup, it's just a little wizard. You just download it and you click a few times and it'll set it up on your computer. I already have Node and NPM set up, so I can skip that step. The next thing it says is I need to type a command into my command line. So I'm gonna open up my command line and just bump, the, bump up the size so we can see it. And I'm going to install. So I'm gonna write node package manager, npm. I'm gonna write install. This dash G stands for global. I want a SAS to be available globally whenever I'm using my computer. And then lastly, I want it to install SAS. So we are good to go. We are all set up. The next thing that I'm gonna wanna do is, I'm gonna want to um, actually create a directory in a project, which I'm gonna do really quick by just saying, make directory called SAS uh, project. Okay, so I've made a directory. I'm gonna CD into, or change directories into that project. And then I'm gonna create, um, by giving the terminal the command touch, I'm gonna create a style.css file. I'm also going to touch a style dot sass file. Now you can see we have both of those inside of our directory and I'm going to just open that up using Visual Studio Code. Now that I have my project uh, open in Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna open up both of these style sheets so you can see that there is nothing on either one of them. I'm also gonna open up the built-in terminal so we can actually put away our native terminal. The next thing you need to do is actually call to SAS since SAS is now running on our computer. It's a thing, right? It's a tool we have in our toolbox. I wanna call on SAS and I wanna ask it to do something. And the thing I want it to do is I want it to actually look at the style dot sass, I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. So I wanna call to the style dot sass file and I want it to process it into the style dot CSS, okay? And when I press command or enter, it's gonna go ahead and process it. There was nothing in the style sheet, so that didn't really work out too well for us. So let's just say like I had a body tag, and the cool thing about why I love SAS so much is because it removes all of the open and close uh, curly brackets. So I don't have to put any curly brackets. It's all about proper indenting and spacing. So all I did was properly indent and tab to, to correctly to the second line. And now I can just write something like, uh, I want the background to be red, and that's it. I can press save, and nothing's gonna happen, but I'm gonna go back down and run my command again. I'm gonna say, hey, sass, go take my style.sass file and convert it into normal CSS. And you can see, over on the right-hand side, we have perfectly compliant CSS, okay? Every time you wanna process your sass, you can come down to the terminal and run that command again. But that's a lot of work, right? So let's take it to the next level. The next step would be for you to actually make SAS watch your file, and then every time there's a change, it's just gonna update it on the fly. That would be a lot better, right? Well, let's do that. It's really the same kind of command. I'm gonna come down here in my terminal, put the same command in, but right after SAS, I'm gonna say dash dash watch, okay? And then I'm gonna press Enter. Now it says SAS is watching for changes and I can press Control C to stop 
this kind of like watching that's happening. Now let's see if that's true. So I have my background of red, which would be a really, really ugly background for my page. And now I'm gonna make the color of the text aqua because we want it to be even uglier. I'm gonna press Command S for save. So over here, you can see it's it's detected those changes and it's updated my CSS file on the fly. Okay, so far we have installed SAS and we've got it up and running in our project and it's now watching for changes in our SAS file so that it can convert it to readable CSS for the browser. But so far that doesn't sound very unique. Why wouldn't I just write my websites in regular CSS? It just seems like it's copying it back and forth. Well, the first kind of added benefit of SAS is that you get to nest your CSS selectors. So let's say I have this body uh, style that I've created and inside of the body I have a div, okay? I want that div to be a combined selector. So, you know, in CSS it would say something like this, like body, Div, right? But I'm, then I'm writing body over and over. Now, if later on I wanted to have a body div like unordered list, then I have to write this. And if I needed to affect the list items, then I have to write that. I'm writing the word body over and over and over again, and that really stinks. I don't want to do that. I want to keep my code dry, right? So I don't want to repeat myself. So right here, all I, all I have to do is write div and then properly indent in my SAS, and I can write a style there and when I save it has now written that code for me. Well that's it, that's how you install SAS, get it set up in your project and start nesting to make your life so much easier. If you like the video make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned because in part two we're going to dive into variables and mix-ins. This is where SAS gets so powerful and where you're never going to want to go back to CSS. I'll see you in the next one.